Sherry, and then, yeah, there's arms behind you. Okay, then please stand as you're able as we continue with the confession and forgiveness that's printed in the bulletin. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we speak. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. For all these things and for sins only you know, Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. And we'll continue with him 848. continue as printed there in the bulletin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. You. The word is near you. If you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord, faith comes from what is heard. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, rich in mercy, 
By the humiliation of your Son, you lifted up this fallen world and rescued us from the hopelessness of death. Lead us into your light, that all our deeds may reflect your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And the congregation may be seated. And the children who are present may come forward. How are you? Good morning. Morning. <laughs> there, there you go. Mama. <laughs> That's okay. That's right. How are you guys doing today? Good. Yeah. Okay. Remember, we're in the season of Lent, and Lent is a time when we prepare to celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection. And I gave you, I've been talking to you about activities that Christians do to prepare, and we talked about prayer, and then last week I talked about fasting, and that meant giving up something. Did you try giving up something last week? You did? How to, how'd it go? Yes. Okay, you, you're ma you made it all week? I did the, um, my switch and tablet. Your switch and wow. your tablet. Wow, that's pretty amazing. I yeah. You couldn't help it. Well, <laughs> grown-ups have a hard time with that, too, so uh, having to do it. Okay, well, I have another activity for you this week. So we talked about prayer fasting. Is, uh, this week is repentance. Do you know what it means to repent? No. It means to say, I'm sorry. And when you do something wrong, and then you say to the person, you say, I'm sorry, and then they, they forgive you for doing that. Um, okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Somebody, I'm somebody got what at school last year. Got what at school? Uh, sorry, yeah, somebody you say. Yeah, well, sometimes, yeah, that happens. Well, and we do it every Sunday, almost every Sunday <coughs> in our worship service, we say we're sorry to God. I come down and I stand by the font at the very beginning of the service, and we say to God, it's called our confession, and we say to God, we're sorry. And then we hear God say, I forgive you, okay? Our sins, the things we do wrong. And that's what we say to God. We're sorry, God, that we sin. And then God says, I forgive you. That We do that er almost every week in worship. Is it easy to say you're sorry when you do something wrong? No. No? <laughs> you might be scared. You might be scared, yes. Yeah. Sometimes it could be easy. Sometimes it's hard. Yeah, you get scared because you think, oh, I'm going to get in trouble if I say that I did it. Yeah. Um, if somebody told at school and the buddy did not say sorry and he tells you the story, you could say, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you can still say that, yeah. Wait, somebody at school, um, somebody at school was crying because I think it was when I'm playing. And, um, mm -hmm. and so, and, and he, and then he went to test. Oh, that, yeah, because sometimes we're afraid when we've done something and that. Well, fortunately, God gives us the Holy Spirit, which helps us to say, I'm sorry when we've done something wrong. And so this week, whenever you do something wrong, whether it's to your brother or your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or someone, that you will practice to say, I'm sorry, Okay. Or your baby brother, that's right. I'm sorry if he gets into something you were doing. It's like my uh, eldest son, he had just built a Lego pirate ship and he walked out of the room and his younger brother, my yo his brother came in and knocked it all over. <laughs> and uh, he, he had to work real hard at saying, uh, not, not to hurting his younger brother. <laughs> It was hard not to do that. But to be able to say you're sorry, say, I'm sorry that I did that. Okay, so practice that this week. Thanks for coming up. <laughs> now we can go find mom. And we'll sing our Latin canticle. We'll continue with the Latin canticle. But you have 
act of love we crucified. We laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king we named a fraud and sacrificed the Lamb of God. O Lamb of God, O God, I love the Lamb of God. O wash me in your precious blood, Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. So lost I should have died, but you have brought me to your side to be led by your staff and rod. Our first reading is from Numbers chapter 21, verses 4 through 9. From Mount Or, the Israelites set out by their way to the Red Sea to go around the land of Edom. But the people became impatient on the way. The people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. Then the Lord sent poisonous serpents among the people, and they bit the people so that many Israelites died. The people came to Moses and said, We have sinned by speaking against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord to take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people, and the Lord said to Moses, Make a poisonous serpent and set it on a pole, and everyone who is bitten shall look at it and live. So Moses made a serpent of bronze and put it upon a pole. And whenever a serpent bit someone, the person would look at the serpent of bronze and live. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Our psalm reading is Psalm 107, verses 1 through 3 and 17 through 22. Give thanks to the Lord, for the Lord is good, for God's mercy endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord proclaim that God redeemed them from the hand of the foe. Gathering them in from the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some were fools and took rebellious paths. Through their sins they were afflicted. They loathed all manner of food and drew near to to death's door. And in their trouble they they cried to the Lord, and you you delivered them from their distress. You sent forth your word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. Let Let them give thanks to you, Lord, for your steadfast love and your wonderful works for all people. Let them offer sacrifices of thanksgiving and tell of your deeds with shouts of joy. Our second reading is from Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. You were dead through the trespasses and sins in which you once lived, following the course of this world, following the ruler of the power of the air, the spirit that is now at work among those who are disobedient. All of us once lived among them in the passions of our flesh, following the desires of flesh and senses, and we were by nature children of wrath, like everyone else. But God, who is rich in mercy, out of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead through our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus 
so that in the ages to come he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace in kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not your own doing, it is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one can boast. For we are what he has made us, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand to be our way of life. Holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks be to God. to the seed of your word. Lord, let my heart be good soil where love can grow and peace is understood. When my heart is hard, break the stone away. When my heart is cold, warm it with the day. When my heart is lost, Lead me on your way, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good soil. Holy Gospel according to St. John in the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. And Jesus said, and just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Those who believed in him are not condemned, but those who do not believe are condemned already, because they have not believed in the name of the only Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light has come into the world and people love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For all who do evil hate the light and do not come to the light, so that their deeds may not be exposed. But those who do what is true come to the light, so that it may be clearly seen that their deeds have been done in God. The Gospel of the Lord. Oh, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In today's reading from John's Gospel, we have one of them. We have uh, one of the most, if not the most, familiar verse known to Christians. John three sixteen. Now, why is this verse so familiar? Well, the verse sums up our entire. Christian message. It tells of God's ongoing relationship with us, tells how much God loves us, tells us how we are saved. And because of this, John 3.16 is often referred to as the entire gospel in one verse. And it's a great verse. And I said, and as I said, it's probably the one most familiar to Christians, yet it is this very familiarity that is also a problem for us. You may find yourself saying, yeah, John 3.16, for God to love the world, yada, 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 yada. Yeah, I, I've heard it before. And yes, we hear it. But because of its familiarity, do we hear it? It's like the Apostles' Creed or the Lord's Prayer. You know, they're so familiar that uh, when we say them, we often don't think about what we're saying. I remember when the ELW first came out, one of my confirmation students said to me, Pastor, why every time they come out with the hymnal, they change the creed. Now I have to think about it when I say it. <laughs> and uh, the person, as soon as they said it, they went, Oh, I shouldn't have said that to you. <laughs> but I said, That's okay. Don't worry about it. But, you know, we're so familiar with it, we do not think. And I think John 3.16 is like that. 
Now, to assist, help us this morning, to assist us to hear this familiar verse, let's look at a couple of the words in it a little closer. We're going to look at the word believe and the words eternal life. Now, in the ancient Greek, word that John uses for believe, it's a verb. It's not, you know, it's an action verb. And it means a continual action. Okay, so when he says, you know, those who believe, not just once, but continually believe. And John did this because he understand that to believe is not something that's static. It's done once and it's done. You know, it's over. Over the years, I ran used to run into this with parents about baptism and confirmation. They did not see these events as continual parts of their child's faith journey, but they saw them as things that they had to get done. Get them done, and it's done. Okay, now it's over. You don't have to worry anymore. For John to believe is not something to get done, but something that's ongoing, thriving, alive. To believe is like starting on a journey or entering into a new relationship. Something new is always turning up. To believe is not a spectator sport. It's something we participate in, like worship. Worship, I talked to confirmation students about worship. I said, worship is not a spectator sport. It's not like going to a movie or the, see a theater show you participate in worship, and so too is our faith life. You and I participate in faith. We participate in believing. To believe is not a past event. Well, I did that when I was in Sunday school or when I got confirmed. Um, but it is here and now. And because it is continual action... It moves with you into the future. You know, it's like your baptism. It may have occurred 10, 50, 80 years ago, but its promise is still at work. And it can do that because it is not a static event. It is a continual event. And from the reading, you and I hear what benefits this continual action of believing gives to us. We will not perish. We will not be judged. We will have eternal life. The other words I want us to focus on here. Now, I would guess that for most of us here, what comes to mind when you hear the words eternal life is that when you die, you will be in heaven with Christ and all the believers who have gone before you. Now, that's a good standard answer for us. But if we look as eternal life as just a future thing, it doesn't do us any good in the present. I think I got a ladybug in my hair. <laughs> Driving me crazy there. There we go. Yep, there we go. There we go. And just as believing is not a static action, eternal life is not just a future thing. Every time the phrase is used by John, it's in the present tense, which means that the eternal life Jesus is speaking about is not something for the future, but it's something that believers have now in the present. New Testament scholar Gail O'Day explains it this way, eternal life is one of the dominant metaphors in John's gospel to describe the change in human existence wrought by belief in Jesus. To have eternal life is to live life no longer defined by blood or by the will of the flesh or by human will, but by God. Eternal does not mean endless duration of human existence, but a way of describing life as lived in the unending presence of God. Eternal life is not something held in reserve for the future, like an IRA or a pension account. It begins in the believer's present. 
gospel. What great news this is for you and me. We don't have to wait until we die to have life in Jesus. We can have it now. And if you stop to think about it, when do you need life in Jesus the most? After you die and you're in heaven celebrating with all the saints? Or now, as you live your life, day in and day out with its joys and its sorrows? Now we need that life to know Christ is with us. Understanding what is behind these words, believe in eternal life, assist you and I so that whenever we hear or we read or we see a reference to this verse, we can really hear it. Understanding what is behind these words, believe in eternal life, assist you and I to see how our faith is not a one-and-done action or just a hope in future event. But it is a living thing, active, alive, now. And so with this understanding, let us hear this verse in a new way. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that all those who journey with him, enter into relationship with him, participate with him, will not perish, but will have him present, alive, active, real in their lives. Now and forever. Amen. And please stand as you're able as we continue with hymn 323. Let us proclaim the faith in which we share with others around the world in the words of the Apostles' Creed as it's printed there in your bulletin. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Of all 
Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to death. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. I invite you to share the peace of the Lord with those who are around you this morning. And the congregation may be seated for the offering. Please stand as you are able, and let us pray together the offertory prayer. Jesus, you are the bread of life. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. We pray this in your name. Amen. Trusting in God's God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Gracious God, your love unites. Give vision to the global church and foster cooperation in mission. Increase inter-religious understanding and ecumenical dialogue. Make your church a sanctuary for all. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. Creating God, your love enlivens. Restore balance to the earth's fragile habitats. Preserve wilderness lands, rainforests, and wildlife. Cleanse oceans and rivers, especially our Minnesota River and Mississippi River watersheds. Make us good stewards of the earth. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Righteous God, your love liberates. We give thanks for those who courageously witness to your liberating love. Free all people from the evils of racism, religious strife, and hatred. Hear us, O God. Your Your mercy mercy is great. great. Merciful God, your love heals. Care tenderly for all whose loved ones perished from 
from pandemic disease in every nation, strengthen healthcare workers, first responders, and caregivers, relieve all who live with chronic illness and pain, give hope and encouragement to all in need, especially Matt H., Cameron, Kennedy, and Huxley, Orly Menke, and the grieving family and friends of Matt Solar, and those we name in our hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Incarnate God, your love enlightens. Open our hearts and minds to fresh understandings, understandings of your faith. Deepen our love for you and for one another. Teach us to pray for our enemies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Abiding God, your love saves. Those who died in the faith are made alive in Christ. We give thanks for your promise that we also will be raised in newness of life. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on our journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. May God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. And are sending him 779. Thank you. 
Go in peace and share your bread someplace else.